Hi there guys, Alexander here again. Welcome to another one. Today we will be talking about uh, Windows Terminal application or my terminal here that you've seen in my streams and asked about many times. And I've decided to finally record the video on it. I've shared with some of you my uh, repository from GitHub where you can copy paste my uh, configuration, but I've never really done this. And also I've added some new things uh, since then. So I think this is a great, uh, great video for you to kind of see how to configure this and how this thing works. So let's kind of get into it immediately. So if you're using Windows 10 and 11, uh, you might already have Windows 10, uh, sorry, Windows Terminal installed. If not, go to the Microsoft Store and install it. Once you have it installed, you're going to click here on this uh, and run it. You're going to click on this arrow and then you're going to click settings. And this window is going to open. And this is where we're going to start now and kind of explain and go quickly through all of the settings so you can kind of know what it is. As you can see here, when you when you open up this uh, this uh, window, you're going to have this default profile. As you can see for me, it says Ubuntu. And the reason why it says Ubuntu is because I'm running Windows Linux subsystem on this Windows machine. So I can kind of get best of both worlds. Uh, I'm running all of my services inside of Ubuntu when I'm streaming like my API, my databases, my Docker, uh, the front end and stuff and then the rest of the stuff the streaming stuff like the stream labs and my microphone drivers and all of the other stuff is running on Windows and this is why I'm able to actually do this because unfortunately if I was trying to stream from Linux machine this microphone would barely work the camera and all of this stuff there's really no drivers no hardware support so I'm kind of using both of the operating systems where they're really good at so your default profile here is going to be whatever uh, you, you're you using. So if you're probably a .NET developer or something, you might be using, you know, Windows PowerShell or Command Prompt or something. But I, either way, I don't think it really matters much. For the most part of the video, you can configure the same configuration as mine, no matter which profile you're using. But if you want to do exactly what I'm doing, then I advise you to actually go to the, you know, to the Microsoft Store, and then you install Ubuntu here, right? So you're gonna go to the store, you're gonna search for Ubuntu, and then you're gonna open up Ubuntu and you're gonna click get and then install. There are various ways you can install it. You can also install it by going to this uh, learnmicrosoft.com, me and US Windows VSL install, and then you can also follow this guide. Either way, if you wanna truly have the same exact setup on your Windows machine like mine, then make sure that you install Windows Linux subsystem. This video is not about that and we gotta move on. The default terminal application is obviously Windows Terminal, that's what this video is about, so we're gonna stick to that. This configuration is gonna be uh, disabled by default. I'm using my, my whole workflow depends on the terminal, so I said, hey, when my computer starts, make sure that the terminal starts as well, and also make sure to open previous sessions from my terminal. So if I, for example, had three different sessions here and I would restart my computer now or the terminal or whatever, when my computer is really turned on, I would get those same three sessions open. So you definitely want to, in my opinion, you want to have open windows from a previous session selected, right? Now, when it comes to the other things, you can leave them as they are. If you care what they are, just read. Here in the interaction, there isn't really much that you have to touch. I would highly advise you to just leave this as it is. Maybe a few things mentioning, I'll automatically detect URLs and make them clickable. So for example, if I open the terminal and I type, I don't know, you know, google.com, this would now be a link that's clickable. You can, you can click it and it's gonna open a new link, right? Automatically copy selection to clipboard. So basically, you know, with my one hand, if I select this, and I'll, if I right click, I'm pasting, right? So if you want this behavior, if you don't wanna be pressing Control C to copy some text, to leave that open. <clears throat> and then here, I would also advise you to, to only copy the plain text and not kinda um, um, any other types because then it's gonna mess up with your terminal. So whenever you copy something, it should just be plain text only, right? All right, so if we move to appearance here, uh, also a tab that you don't really have to touch much. The theme here just defines by default, you're going to have use Windows theme. So if you have a light theme set on your windows, it's going to use light. If you have the dark, it's going to... So I generally just hard code the dark one, right? Uh, and then if we... So most of this stuff is not applying to our configuration anyway, because we don't really have the tabs in this quake mode that we're going to get to in a second. <clears throat> so we're going to proceed now further down. 
so essentially, I would highly advise you to simply, you know, replicate what I have here. But uh, most of the stuff that you might end up changing here is not going to really apply to anything anyway, because again, we're not running terminal in this mode here. We're running it in this quake mode and there's no tabs and a lot of other things. Color schemes here, very self-explanatory. This defines or shows uh, default color schemes of the terminal application. If you want to create your own one, like you could cl click add new here. And then for example, let's imagine you have a VS Code theme and you would kind of like to mix and match your VS Code theme with this one. You could click add new, right? And then you could change it here to, to, to kind of fit your own VS Code theme or any other Vim. Well, actually that wouldn't make sense, but you get the point. So you could kind of do that in here, right? I'm going to discard those changes. So that's pretty much what it is. We're going to be using this Tenacious design here, the default one, and that's the one that I'm using right now. If we go to rendering, you want to make sure that this use the new text render is Atlas Engine. That's pretty much the only thing. And then here in the actions, this is pretty much shortcuts. I highly advise you to spend five, 10 minutes here, set up your own shortcuts. I hope you have some. Try to, my advice for generally shortcuts for like a Vim type of advice is try to create your own set of shortcuts, global shortcuts. For example, I have my own shortcuts from 15 years, 20 years now from video games and programming. So no matter which application I go to, my shortcuts are always the same. The key bindings are always the same. They're just maybe bound to a different application or action or whatever. One thing that I have to mention here that's critical to this video to, to, for you to be useful because many of you have asked me, how do you spawn this thing? How do you hide and show it? How do you toggle it? And the secret basically is here. It's this show hide quake window. So this is the most fundamental thing if you want to achieve what I have here. So the only um, shortcut I'm going to be speaking in this video because the rest I leave to you how you want to use them. But this is the fundamental one. You can see for me it's old shift and one. And that's how I can, regardless of the context in which application I am, I can just do this and open it up. Now, maybe a few of them worth mentioning that you probably like uh, minimizing and maximizing. That's always kind of global. It's control plus and control minus. But for the other things, right, you want to uh, spend a bit of time in, in, inside of this editor, right? Because you definitely want to know how do I open a new window? How do I open a new tab? How do I go to the next tab, to the previous tab, et cetera, et cetera. Please spend five, 10 minutes on this. You're going to thank yourself later. All right. So now we're done with all of this stuff here. And as we, if you remember, our default profile is Ubuntu. So I'm going to go here to Ubuntu so I can configure that profile. Keep in mind that you can configure all of the, all of these profiles separately. So for example, if I have, if I open PowerShell now, you can see that my PowerShell profile intentionally has a different ba different background than the Ubuntu one. In simple words, you can have different configuration for different profiles. So if you're using PowerShell, you might have your terminal have settings on its own. So that's what profiles basically pretty much are, right? In any way, we're going to be focusing on this Ubuntu profile, my own. And let's kind of start here. So. For the most part, those three, those four things here are something that are set by those tools themselves. So for example, if I go to PowerShell, Command Prompt, those things have been pre-filled for you by the operating system. The only maybe thing worth mentioning is this icon. And this icon here pretty much is this icon that you see here. You will, for the most part, not care about this because again, we are running our stuff in the Quake mode and tabs are not visible. So anything really, any configuration that's tab related shouldn't concern you because you're not going to be seeing any tabs in your editor, just FYI, right? So tab, title, la la la, we can skip that. And then here, run this profile as an administrator. I would highly uh, suggest to not do this because you definitely don't want to be running everything by default as administrator. That's super scary, super scary. All right, so let's now go into the fun stuff, which is how to make this look as it does. So if we go to the appearance here, this is where most of the magic happens. Now, I'm going to show you my configuration. You can replicate it if you wish, but I would also advise you have spent several hours playing with different backgrounds, different fonts, different font weights, different font sizes until I ended up being where I am. And this is what I personally like. I would advise you to maybe copy my settings as, as a starting point 
but I would not advise you to go with it because you should be creative. This is super fun to do. You can download multiple different wallpapers online, change them, you know, do all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to show you all of that now. All right. So if we, as you can see here, I'm using Tynesha's Design Dark. Uh, my font face is JetBrains Mono. If I go back here, you can download this font here on JetBrains.com LP Mono. You don't really have to if you don't want to, but I just felt it would be useful to, to, to share it. My default font size is 18. That's the main reason is because I've found myself in my streams whenever I start the terminal that the font, the default font was too low and I'd like my viewers to see things really well. So when I start my terminal, I want my font to be slightly bigger. Seriously, this is completely, completely up to you. So all of these settings here are really up to you. I think one setting that's worth mentioning that I will talk about now is this retro terminal effects. <clears throat> and that's, I think, what most people like about this. You can see how glowy this thing, like, like, literally like a synth wave type of 70s retro. And just to, to mimic uh, to what, I, what I mean by that, if I disable this, you can see that the text now arguably maybe even looks better. It looks clean now and stuff, but if you if you want this retro glowy effect, this is what retro terminal effects does. So if I save that, you can see suddenly that this becomes kind of retro type of stuff, right? Automatically adjust lightness. For me personally, whatever is automatic, it's always disabled. I don't like my configurations to be mutate themselves, change themselves. So I like things to be as, as I left it. So generally, whatever, whenever I see automatic, I disable that, right? So that's kind of just how I work. Cursor self-explanatory is this blinking thing here. So if I change this to a bar instead, we're going to see the blinking bar, not rocket science, right? All right, we go, we move on. Now the fun part, the backgrounds. So here the, under the background images, you have ability to change the background of this. And this is super fun part. That's why I'm saying spend time with this. You know, I've downloaded personally a bunch of really cool, like retro pixelated uh, backgrounds because that's what I personally like myself. So for example, if I change to some of them, let's switch to, let's go to this forest here, for example, and click save. You can see now we have this kind of foresty, uh, like a forest, like a retro two day, 2D pixelated game, right? So essentially under the background image, you configure which background do you want? How do you want the background to stretch? Like, do you want it to be like here, here, right? You want to have this as, as, it's, as you can see here, uniform to fill and you want to leave that and not think about it again. But you can see now you can make some pretty cool configurations and it's really, really cool. As I said, background image alignment is how you want your image to align. And I advise you to play with this. Every time you change the background, you will want specific part of that background to be either on the top, centered, or the bottom, or top left, top right. So I advise you whenever you change the background, you also have to play with this because mostly you will not. So for example, let me just show you. So if I actually choose, I have some pixelated Spider-Man, right? So if I choose this picture, you can see that now I can see Spider-Man's shoes, right? And that's probably not what I want. So I would have to go here and I'd say, actually, I would like to he see his head instead, right? Then if I align it to the top, you can see now that I, that I see this probably as I anticipated, right? So that's why I mean, that's what I mean when I say, you know, play with this background alignment as well. And then background image opacity is self-explanatory. How much of the image color strength do you want to be present? You can see this is way too much. You just want it a bit bluery transparency, right? Just to see it a bit. And this is, I have it around 20% myself. And then the transparency itself, this is the transparency of the whole terminal, right? So if I say here, you know, so this is how transparent the terminal itself is, right? And you can, uh, you can kind of play with this yourself. Let me leave that there. And then the padding basically is this thing that you can see here around the actual terminal. So let's put this to like a super huge number 100, just so you can see how this thing now adds 100 pixels from the right, top and left, right? I'm going to leave that approximately around 30 or 40, how much it was. It doesn't really matter. Uh, okay, so we're pretty much almost done. You can see now how you can get the same setup as mine. That's, that's, that's what it is. I'm just going to use my old... Uh, background images it was as you can see that old background image doesn't really look good if the background adjustment isn't really set to something meaningful so I'm actually going to set it to the bottom so I can see those beautiful trees and the buildings and stuff 
I'm also going to include some of those backgrounds in the repository. So if you like them personally yourself, feel free to take them. And when it comes to the repository itself, if you would like to copy my own configuration and then use it as a base and then fiddle with it, you know, maybe you want to save a few minutes of time and stuff, you can click here on open uh, JSON file and this is your own configuration. So, so we can talk just quickly about this in, in two different ways. First, if you wanted to store this configuration on GitHub, you would basically commit this sort of stuff, right? So this, this is something you would store. Alternatively or opposite of that, if you wanted to apply my own stuff, then you would come here. You wouldn't actually want to paste everything, right? So I'm pretty sure there is like profiles here. So you, what you would want to take, you would want to take my, for example, Ubuntu profile or whatever, and then copy all of the settings from that specific profile, right? But this is up to you. Just keep in mind, <clears throat> if you wanted to export your configuration or import someone else's, this is where you, you go. You go to open JSON file, right? Um, I think this pretty much rounds up the video. I think this is pretty much it. I'm just going to go back here. So this is the JetBrains. This is the installation and just maybe a, an additional piece of information here. So as you can see here, of course, I never told you it's like, how, how does this look like this? And this is many of you will know this, but for those of you who don't, this is a ZSH. So this is a different shell that I'm using. You might be using bash or something else. If you want to get this sort of stuff looking like this, you need to install ZSH. Uh, and you do that by coming to omyz.sh and you click here. Then you're going to copy this to your terminal. And then ter they have like a setup guide that you're going to follow. So it's super simple. You only need to do this. If you're wondering about uh, which, Z which ZSH, uh, ZSH uh, team I'm using, it's called Jonathan. And it comes uh, installed with the default default teams that the ZSH has. So if you like the same one that I have here, it's called uh, Jonathan, right? That's pretty much it. Uh, before I leave, before we round up, I'm just going to show you another thing. So as you can see, my VS Code setup also looks pretty awesome. And I might create a video, additional video on this. But you can see what I was talking about. I kind of made it, I kind of tried to unify my whole my whole experience here which means I wanted to make sure that my terminal and my VS Code look similar, that it's like a part of the same thing. If you're interested in that video, I'm going to be actually very happy to make it as well. Um, this concludes this video. I wanted it to be short and I hope it was. If you, if you have any questions as always or suggestions or anything, please don't hesitate and just ask it. Um, if you want to support this channel, the only thing I would ask you to do and please you to do is please, please go to www.programmer.network sign up, help us build this programming community that we're trying to build. And of course, if not too much of a hustle, like, share and subscribe and comment, whatever this generic stuff, YouTube generic stuff is. Um, I'm wishing you everybody the great day, night, wherever you are. And um, I think I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Have a great one and uh, see you soon. Peace out. Cheers.